what's fun. I, I like, you know what Pop Staples used to call that? Yeah, I'd say, Pop, well, what do you want? What, what kind of amp you want? Go, I don't care. There's something with a little shake on it. <laughs> well, I grew up in Texas and I uh, grew up in a musical family. My mother was a proper singer, schooled that way. Uh, my father was, uh, his best friend was Bob Wills and, and uh, he grew up, uh, I grew up around the Wills family and around Western Swing was the only kind of music that was really allowed in our house. Besides, I, mother had like two Sam Cooke albums and, and a Louis Armstrong record. And that comes out of my playing and my singing and my song choices still to this day, the Sam Cooke stuff very definitely vocally uh, that, you know, I go back and listen to Sam from the Soul Stirrers to the end of his life, which wasn't very long really, unfortunately. But uh, I see that there. I see a, a, a satchmo coming out of my playing, you know. I hear that trumpet coming out all the time, just following the melody or following a harmony line. Nothing I do is very tough. You know, just kind of stick with the basics, really. Um, and then the Will stuff, of course, was jazz, mainly. It was just what it was. I mean, people call it Western Swing. It was jazz. That's what it was. And uh, I'm a huge jazz fan. And that's largely a part of my love for the blues uh, com combined. It's, it was Bob's favorite music, too, was blues. You know, in, in Texas, we'd do things like... Um, there's a lot of passing chords in the, so when my dad just told, showed me a few things on guitar, not, he didn't want me to do it, you know, because he knew what kind of life that it tended to leave. He didn't want, he didn't want his, his oldest son. But uh, he showed me a few things that was interesting, you know. First song he ever showed me was, if you knew I was sad and blue, would you ever think of me? Let's see. If your smile. And these were, uh, so these were the first chords I ever learned. <laughs> and made my life look wild. Would you ever think of me? Well, I had a picture of you by my side. Just like your picture, you bathing in bright. If you knew I was sad and blue, would you ever think? Ugly. And going back, I found Big Bill Brunzi and I found uh, Buckle White, and then of course, eventually, you find your way to Robert Johnson's door. And then, if you want to go before him, then you go towards Sun, Sun House, of which I recorded uh, John the Revelator with the Fairfield Four many years later. So, I, I, you know, once I found that, I was kind of home, you know. And I loved great country music, but it had to have soul. I loved gra great jazz, but it had to have soul. I loved great anything, but it had to have soul. And that's just been the one thing that I've had to... If it, I, if it doesn't move me, I, I, and that seems to be the one common denominator that always tends to do it. I've never seen one this clean. I haven't seen any guitars this clean to, make it, to be sure. Songbirds has got it going on. And he got real wild with it, you know, in his older years when he started playing telly, it was real trebly, you know. But in the early days when he was playing with little Walter, 
but a lot of records it was just him and Walter, Walter playing guitar. And uh, sometimes harp, but lots of times guitar. Was a, little Walter was a great guitar player. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, and Mud was doing, he was pretty succinct. But that was right when he went to sign with Chad. You know? <laughs> said that he had, you've read this I'm sure, that mysterious time in which nobody knew where he was. There was a guy in Alabama from everything we can tell, I think his name was Zeke, and he was some bad ass that a few people knew about but not very many, you know, wasn't there a lot of internet going on back then. Uh, and this would have been 32 right in there, what he showed back up. And uh, he was way better than he'd ever been. And that's when the whole deal with the devil thing had, had all come about, which is all probably bullshit. So, and then Dwayne Alma got turned on to me um, during that time when I was in high school and it blew my mind and I never really quite got over it. I mean, I never heard anybody play with that much uh, conviction that much fire and sense of random just sense of you know you could hear the coal train and the miles that was coming through him and uh, Charlie Parker all that stuff he was going way outside the lines toward the end and it was no telling where he would have gone in the end but I mean it Dwayne really to open my head you know you know <laughs> I'd have to turn this amp way up for that. from and I started listening to Jesse Ed Davis was back to Oklahoma and Taj Mahal and Ry Cooter and then Ry Cooter was his complete education and continues to be a complete education every time I hear him or see him and I always stumble all over myself when I talk to him I always feel like an idiot when I'm <laughs> talking to Ry because he always looks like but you know that's what we do with our hero Rose we uh we make idiots out of ourselves, I think. Thanks for watching the Vault Sessions. Every view and subscription we get helps us buy guitars for kids. Click here to subscribe, click here to watch more Vault Sessions, and visit our website here to learn more about our Guitars for Kids program. We'll see you next week.